I've been the bad guy for a long time. Uh, I, I would say for the past um, three years I've been the bad guy. But, you know, I'm the guy that speaks out against the institution. I'm the guy that tells the truth. I'm the guy that, that uh, you know, is honest. And most people don't want to hear the truth, and most people don't know the truth. So, you know, to them it's a shock, and I don't know. You know. <laughs> I don't mind being the bad guy. Say hello to the bad guy. I put everything aside for this one. I mean, this fight was real important to me. Um, and I've been, uh, I've got my businesses in order, and, and I got, I got people in place to take care of stuff. And this is one of the only times where, you know, I get to train, I, I go home, I take a nap, you know, I eat a good meal. Um, this is, I'm training like, like I was training when I was fighting full time. And, you know, to me, it's a dream come true. So, I, I think I'm, I'm going to be the best that I've been, and I think I know I'm getting better. So. Well, I didn't think this fight was going to happen until, you know, three or four months ago, to be honest with you. I mean, uh, you know, I, I had his word, I had his manager's word that this was a done deal, and, you know, I, I spent a lot of money and time and effort to help put the deal together, and you know, I was the real catalyst to getting it done, and when it came time to sign contracts, I mean, he was nowhere to be found, and that's why all the videos came out, because... You know, he talked all that BS, and then all of a sudden, you know, his hand wouldn't work, and his contract couldn't get signed. And so I, I had very little faith that the fight was going to happen. And but now I, it's, you know, it's obviously real. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. Training has been fantastic. I've been uh, brought my old team back. Um, stayed here locally in San Jose and uh, worked hard with the boys, and uh, it's just been, it's just been great. The, uh, my uh, IFL team, the Razor Claws, would help me out too. They would kick off my training, so uh, some of the some of the best I've ever felt mentally and physically. And I'm ready for the battle. Well, Mo just came out uh, or yesterday, actually. Uh, started our training yesterday. We coordinated ahead of time, uh, but uh, he's going to be here for three solid weeks and get me get me ready. And um, Mo and I got a real special relationship. We've been fighting together for a long, long time. And, I just cornered him to fight Marco Huas, um, got him through that, and he did wonderful. And, you know, he's just like, um, he's one of those ultimate warriors, man. He never dies, and he never gives up, and he's always a competitor, and I, I just love having him here. He gives me a lot of strength, and he never lets me rest. Now, there's been a lot of hype for this fight. They're building up, building up. Is this fight going to live up to the hype? Oh, I think it will. I mean, um... The great thing about Phil is he knows how to sell a fight. He just, he, you know, he bees himself and he adds a little to it. And uh, he's got that great pro wrestling persona. Um, and he comes to fight regardless of whether he loses or not. So uh, he's going to bring it, you know. And I think, I know he's got a puncher's chance. And if he comes mentally and physically prepared, he's got a fighter's chance. I don't think he has much other skill. I think that's his strength. Is that he's a brawler. He's got power, punches, and power wrestling and he's a big strong guy and you know he's your basic ground and pound kind of brawler guy so I don't expect any real technical cool stuff to come out of him you know I'm not worried about him submitting me or doing anything crazy like that so he's going to try to come out and knock me out smash my head in and you know beat me down my prediction is it will be super exciting and um, I'm either going to crush him or he's going to crush me and there's going to be a new superhero in town and there's going to be a new era of uh of how people carry themselves as mixed martial arts champions. What's your take on MMA right now? Mainstream? Is, is it mainstream? It is um, six months away from being completely mainstream. Okay. So it, it's, you know, uh, I'm a businessman. There's there's a, what we call the chasm, and, and that's what we use in technology, it's what we use in business. And, you know, we're. We're about halfway up the chasm, you know, to get to the peak of the industry, and then we've got a few years at its peak, and then it will decline and become something else. But um, it's almost mainstream. And the only thing holding us back is the monopolies in the sport, um, the, the meatheads in the sport, you know. At the end of the day, when the war goes away and when the fear in society goes away, people are going to start looking at us and say, why are you guys fighting in a cage again? And if it's not about martial arts, if it's not about doing something better for your life, if it's not about changing your life or enhancing your life in some way, then then politically it's going to become the bad thing again. And it's going to become the dirty thing that nobody wants to support and appreciate, even though it is the greatest sport and the oldest sport in the world. But, you know, society dictates what they want. And right now, 
they want violence and they want meatheads and they want flash and they want show and you know I'm the bad guy because I'm nice and I'm a martial artist and I'm kind and I speak the truth and that makes me the bad guy. <laughs>